there. Who's out there today on a beautiful Monday? And, um, you know, I did a Facebook Live. First of all, I'm using a new microphone. Please let me know if you can hear me. And please let me know if it sounds okay or I can change to a different microphone. I'm, you know, not, I'm not a technical guru. So I'm not 100% sure if this is going to work. Um, but I can change mics. I'm, I'm technical enough to know I can change mics. So let me know. If you hear me, um, please leave me a note in the comments section. So I did a, a live stream in on Instagram last week, and it was to celebrate our 50,000th um, subscriber. And so when I did that, oh, I think we're locking up. Uh-oh, this is bad. Something bad's happening. Um, I don't know if you can keep hearing me, so I'm going to keep talking. But everything looks like it's about to throw up. Okay. Might have to stop. Okay, let me just see if I can see what everybody on the team is seeing. I'll just check in with them. And let's see. I might, oh. Okay. Is everybody still here? Have you been waiting for me? Wow. Um, my whole computer shut down. I had to start this whole thing again. So thank you. Thank you for waiting. Um, I don't know what I did or said wrong, um, but I'm, I'm so glad we're back. Okay. Let me just say, here's, here's what we're doing here today. Number one, I did a live on Instagram last week and we celebrated uh, 50,000 people joining Instagram and I didn't ask me anything, but I didn't include Facebook and I didn't include YouTube. So I 
wanted to, I just heard about um, Dr. DeBias, who is a Canadian veterinarian. We use a lot of his products. If you don't use anything of his, at the very least, use a service that you can get your dogs, um, your, you cut off a little sample of your dog's hair, you send it away to their lab and they test for heavy metals, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Love, love, love Dr. DePias. We use um, several of his products. We use his Omega uh, product and we use his, um, a product called Liver Tune. So yeah, we use a lot of, a lot of his products. So as you may know, a few weeks ago, we, we said as an organization, the team and I got together and we decided we were going to donate match, don't match um, donations up to $5,000 for the, um, for, to help recover the pets and the medical care for the fire, forest fighters, forest fires in uh, Hawaii. So we did make that donation. And so then I heard that Dr. Tobias was doing one as well. He might have had a much bigger um, donation than we did. So he had $20,000 that he was able to to um, donate through his GoFundMe for the devastation that's happened in Hawaii. But he, um, he also did one for all of the animals that the, the pets that have suffered or have been injured or need temporary housing or need food and shelter or need surgery because of all the firefighters, fires, forest fires happening in Canada. If you live in the U.S., I know you know what I'm talking about because your air quality probably hasn't been the best lately, thanks to the wildfires up here. Every single province of, in Canada has had at least one wildfire. So far, uh, 33 million acres have been lost. So within that, there is a lot of people who had to be evacuated. Some could take their pets, some couldn't. And so Dr. Tobias, he set up another GoFundMe. He raised $20,000 for Hawaii. And when I checked, he had it running for two weeks. He's only been able to raise $2,000. $1,000 of that, the man donated himself. And I'm like, come on, guys, we can do better. We can do better. So this is, I'm going to come here. I'm going to answer your questions. And I'm going to challenge those of you who own dogs, those of you who are professional dog trainers. I want to challenge you in two different ways. The first thing I'd like you to do is you can go to dogthat.com forward slash GoFundMe, and you're not GoFunding us. You're GoFunding, we're supporting Dr. Tobias's um, campaign. And I just thought it was easier just to make a simple link for you all. There's a lot of blinking going on here, so I'm turning on my Do Not Disturb. So what I'd love for you to do is donate $1 for every year your dogs are old. And if you've got two dogs, let's add them up. If you've got a puppy, let's donate for every month they are old. Whatever, or whatever, whatever your heart dictates that your wallet can do. If everybody listen, listening, you know, we have as a as a community, we have never um, set up things where uh, like Patreons or things where you you have to pay to get good information from us. Yes, we have online classrooms, but every week my team and I we work to put out. Let's have some hearts for my team, please. If you're watching me, you can do that. Just throw a heart in the comments for our team. We, every week, we put out, we want to put out like a master class for dog owners, regardless of any financial barriers. You can come over to YouTube and we have the podcast that we put out every week, um, most often two episodes. My team puts out some form of education, even when I do a podcast. And so we never... We never ask you to pay for that. And so I would love, I would love as a community, if we could blow up Dr. Tobias's uh, GoFundMe campaign. So we are going to, now Dr. Tobias has put in a thousand dollars of his own. So let's not discount, let's discount that. If we can grow his campaign to $6,000, take out the thousand he put in, dogs that will donate 5,000. So if we as a community can raise 5,000, Dogs that is going to add 5,000. So what you can do, number one, you can share this. I'm going to answer some of your questions. We can share this. So if you just put it on your social media page, you know, let's do better for dogs and cats who need us. 
You can use pets. You can say just dogs, but it's, it's going to go to pets, any kind of pet that needs help right now. So number one, share this. Number two, just click on that link and go and don donate. Like I think if you're a pet owner, $1 for every year your dog is old, if they're only one year old, then every dollar for every month they are old. I think everybody can do that, right? And if you are a professional dog trainer, if, let me define what I mean. If you make money, if you make money helping somebody in a professional way, any money, I don't care if you just have one client, for every client you have, I, I encourage you to donate a dollar. If you only have one, one client, then, you know, do what your heart dictates. So you might do a hundred dollars. You might do one, whatever, whatever you make from one session, one hour session, donate that. These are, you know, I recognize that, that, um, you know, we could potentially be hitting into some hard, hard times for everybody, but everyone can, can dig deep for these animals right now. Now, I also want you for a professional dog trainer, share this on your page and encourage all of your clients to donate $1 for every year old their dog or cat is and accumulatively. They have three dogs. Let's add them all up. And hey, let's spend some of our money. The Dogs at Team, we love helping people. So let's do that. Okay. So we made that link. So it's super easy for you to, to share. And I'm just going to scroll back and look for your, um, look for any questions you had. And you probably stopped answering, asked me questions when I kind of went missing, but I'm back now. So go ahead and I will, um, I'm going to scroll up and see if I, if there was any questions up here that I might've missed. Uh, how do you from Texas? Yeah. Let me know in the comments where you're from, where you're watching from. And it doesn't anywhere in the world. I know that there is some time in your lifetime that you have got some dog training information from us. That has been an aha moment for you. If you have, please help us out. Please let's grow this GoFundMe campaign. And, um, somebody on the team can just say, let us know where that campaign's going just from the people watching here. Um, okay. So I'm looking for any questions that you may have for me. You know, if they're do long dog training questions, then uh, we'll maybe do a, a podcast about them. If you have easy questions, hello from Germany. I have a special place in my heart for Germany now because my new puppy's coming in from Germany. Um, how do you handle dog excitement around children? So hot zone, the hot zone game where the dog knows where they have to go and, um, and a lot of supervision, right? Because dogs can be conditioned to be, to settle around children, but children are children. So they're not predictable. They're a little crazy. They might scream and make noises. They might, you know, make drop things. They might. So we need to, um, make sure that, we are advocating for our dog and maybe only put them in that situation for, you know, one to two minutes and then get them out and then gradually increase that time that they are, um, that they are in that situation around children. And if there's more than one children, like if you know, you're going to be like at a family event where there's kids, then I would start going to anywhere. There's like a, a lot of kids coming and going uh, a school, a classroom, and just set up with a lawn chair and your little, your dog's hot zone. And, away from those kids and just feed him or play tug games so that you're conditioning him to be okay. If you're joining us late, there is a link on the page and we are hoping that we can pump up this GoFundMe that's been running for two weeks that they've only managed to get a thousand dollars raised. I would love for us as a community to raise $5,000 and then dogs that team we're matching it. Um, how do you handle it if your dog walks away from training? Did anyone see my Instagram post with Tater Salad walking away from training yesterday? <laughs> Let me set the stage. He did have to go to the bathroom in, his, in fairness to him, but a border collie never would have walked away from that training. But what, what happened was it was taxing. I've been working on, so he knows one of those behaviors, the, the crawl. We worked on that for a little while. And the backup, I've been working on um, 
correcting some of the misunderstandings he had. Kim attempted to teach her him to back up, and um, it was funny. It was hysterical. It wasn't exactly what what you know you would want. So I've been working on his backup off and on. You know, whenever we I go out to train the other dogs. Well, I decided yesterday the backup's been going really well, backing up to a target. I was going to do three behaviors. I want you to down, back, or crawl, and I'm going to give you one of those three cues. And has frustration barrier was pretty darn low because there was a couple of times if you watch the video he goes to move forward when I told him to back and then he didn't get any kind of recognition from me or reinforcement so then he immediately got up and back bravo right got his cookies and then I made the next one very very easy anyway the session was I showed that like a minute clip and the session was over three minutes long the, my, my timer went off at three minutes and I was in the middle of a, a couple of really good ones. I said to myself, just one more. And that's when Tater said, I'm just going to go touch this target and you better feed me or I'm leaving. So it was kind of funny. All right. So what do you do if the dog waits, walks away from training? That is a reflection. The dog is just telling us, you know, what they feel about what's going on. So you go back and you look at your video. Yes, we always video our dog training. You go back and you look at your video. Is it that your rate of enforcement was too high? Is it that the um, thing you were asking, your, your expectations of what the dog understood was too high? If a dog walks away from training, this is one, I don't care who the dog is, who you are, when it happens. If a dog walks away from training, it's always on us. Did we have a plan? Did we execute a plan? Or did we just go out there and go, yeah, let's just do something. If you have a plan and you, ex you execute that plan, then what's going to happen is you're generally going to have a great session. And did you set a timer? So was it too long? Like you want to grow that dog's actually, I'm doing a podcast, uh, the podcast for, for Wednesday. Uh, I already recorded it, but something bad happened. So it has to be re-recorded. We're doing that tonight. And, and it's going to help you with this as well, because you have to think about how do you take that on board personally if a dog walks away from training. I'm going to put that in for you to think about. Um, sometimes when I tug her collar, she puts her teeth on my wrist and alligator rolls. We've done lots of collar grab, but I'm often frozen what to do in the moment. Um, I'm not sure what you say when you tug on her collar. Like if you do a collar grab and you're going to reinforce, um, tater salad came with that behavior. As a rescue dog, he was 15 months old because he knew if he put his mouth on people, they'd leave him alone. So all that I do is we spent tons and tons of times conditioning collar grab and not putting him to a frustration threshold where he wanted to do that. But let's say he was on the furniture. Our bad. We didn't set up the barriers. We let him. And he's like, I'm getting on the couch. And you would take him by the collar to get him off. And he would alligator roll. I would just immediately put my second hand on the collar and just hold because they can't bite and they can't roll. That's all. Um, but your goal is to set, make sure that that, that doesn't happen. That's really what, what you're doing. Oh, you're so sweet. Dell said uh, that you're worth waiting for. Super sweet. Thank you. And I apologize for that little blackout we had at the beginning. Um, how do I give my 12-week-old puppy less freedom now that I've accidentally given him too much from the beginning? He fights me like crazy when it's time to come indoors. He's always on leash. Um, you've got to rehearse the end more, which means go out, come back in, toss a cookie on the floor. So I search, go out, go out for a couple of like this, two steps out. And, and you, you can use a cue if you want, but you know, let's go back in the house and throw some cookies on the floor. You want the dog to not predict that the end of going in the house is the end of all fun as he knows it. So we don't want a terminal ending to going back in the house. That will help you, I promise. Um, okay, I'm trying to, I'm gonna scroll back down here. Anyone on the team wanna put in there, what are, what is, what are we at on the GoFundMe page right now? Because we have 111 on you on here. Happy birthday to Brian. Um, Brian is one of the owners of Four My Merles, and it's his birthday today. So everyone say happy birthday to Brian in the chat. Uh, oh, look at this, Dr. Tobias himself. Okay, we are big clients here at Dogs That. We use tons of Dr. Tobias's products. And um, look at that, he's giving us a shout out. Awesome. 
Um, okay, next question. I'm jumping around. Here's the guy, here, guys. Woohoo! 233, 2331. Okay, remember, $1 for every age your dog is old, or if you want to do a multiplier, $10 for every age your dog is old. And if you have more than one dog, let's add them together. Whatever your heart dictates. All right. There's dogs out there that need us. So, and come on back here and just put in the comments that you donated. And um, yeah. And you know, what motivated you to donate? Because th that's great. Um, all right. So if, if, if you asked a question and I didn't answer it, don't feel bad about putting it back in the comments. We won't think that you're spamming us, but go ahead and do that. All right. Um, and I'm, I'm going, okay. So my team is picking up questions and I'm just reading them over here. So this might be helpful too. I have an 11 month old BC named Blitz having trouble with it's your choice. He bites my hand when it's closed. If I say no bite nicely, he backs off and settles open hand, give treat. He pounces and repeats. Okay. Hillary, the idea of it's your choice is to create the dog's understanding of when they are and aren't getting cookies. So it's really important when we start it's your choice, there's two cues in place. Anybody knows the two cues that are in place before we start it's your choice? Put them in the comments right now. Yeah, come on back and say shared if you have shared this because I um, appreciate that. Um, okay, so the GoFundMe is to help the devastation, all of the pets here in Canada that have, have lost their housing, they need medical care, they need attention, they need temporary housing. Um, that Dr. Tobias, who is you know a 30 year veterinarian here in Canada, who has an amazing product line, check out, go and just Google that man. He's got amazing products. We, I use them on all my dogs, every single one of them. Um, he started a GoFundMe campaign and it didn't get any traction. And I'm like, come on. We can do better as a community. We can do better. And so that's that's what we're doing right here today. All right. And so you just we're making it easy for you. Just go to dogsat.com um, forward slash GoFundMe. All right. So the question, it's your choice. So what are the two cues that we're looking for before we start? It's your choice. Just leave it in the comments. And uh, I'm going to take a little drink of water here while I'm looking. And if you don't know, um, I will I will fill you in on that one. There's a lot of questions coming in. If I don't answer your questions, the team's saving these, and your question might turn into a podcast. So it might get even deeper answer. So, all right, the two cues we need in place before we start progressing it's your choice is the cue that means that it, I use the word search. You can use any two words you want. Search means that um, you can look for food on the floor and you're going to toss the cookie very, very close to where the dog is. They don't have to like search the whole room. So search, toss the cookie on the floor and um, cookie or cook is what we're shortening it to. Cook means a cookie is coming right to your face. Those are the two, two cues. Joan, thank you very much. I appreciate you, my friend. Uh, and Nanette got nailed it. Cookie and search. Okay. So um, Robin, thank you. Thank you. And, and I know many of you that watch this channel aren't even from Canada. So because you're never a hero in your own backyard, right? Uh, there's some Canadians that do follow us, but mostly it's uh, people from other parts of the world. And mostly, I think, 50% or more are from America. Um but so thank you. Thank you for our American friends for donating. I'm sure a lot of Canadians donated to the Hawaiian um, effort as well. Thank you, Kaylee. So our dog knows cook and search. Now we can start playing It's Your Choice because if you see cookies, did you hear the word cookie? Did you hear the word search? No sense going for it right now. And so that's what helps the dog understand, oh, Oh, I see. I wait. So I think if your dog is, is um, if Blitz is having trouble biting your hand, number, and the, the other thing I want to say, you mentioned, I say no bite. 
if I said Fernel le Part, would you know what I meant? Okay, I apologize to all my French Canadians. I, I didn't make a good effort there in my French accent. Most people wouldn't know what close the door is in French unless you understood French. A dog can't understand what no bite means. They just don't. They just understand that you are getting angry or frustrated. And so it, it curbs their behavior. So we need to be quiet because it's not your choice to tell them what to do. The game is called It's Your Choice. And if they're biting a lot, then just go back to more cookies upheld. Cookies up here. So cookies are in a bowl up here and you're picking them up. Does he try to bite and nip at you there? That, then that's your starting point. You shouldn't have it in your hand. Okay, um, we now have, I did see a, a running total. What? A little less than 2,500 to go. Keep sharing, guys, keep sharing. All right, and Dr. Codger of the Healthy Dog Expo, she's going to match a $250 uh, donation. So um, if someone has a question, that becomes a podcast. Okay, so... If there's a question that becomes a podcast, we got to get a question that comes a podcast because we're going to get her to spend $250. That's awesome. All right. We're up to $3,528. Go team. Christine Kubota, you're a star. Christine is one of um, this is biggest cheerleaders. So Christine is on the Canadian world team uh, with her German short hair pointer. Yeah, you heard me right. She was on the Canadian team this year. And uh, this absolutely adores her. And uh, thank you. Thank you so much for your donation, Christine. I appreciate you. All right. Um, all right. So Kathy's question is, I have an 11-year-old woodle. Is that like a Wheaton doodle? No. Is that, that would be a Wheaton poodle. That, okay. Let's not go. All right, 35 from Spain? What? What? Thank you. Okay, back to our Woodle question. I have to find it. I lost it now. Um, I can't believe we might make that $5,000 today on this live. Okay, here we go. Kathy has an 11-year-old Woodle named Cooper who hates the floor sweeper. Okay, that could be a, and by the way, if I answer your question, I'm not saying like you're obliged to make a donation to, to Dr. Tobias's GoFundMe page, but I think you get extra karma points if you do, just saying. All right. So um, he goes crazy and attacks a floor sweeper. And what you have to do is something called counter conditioning. And it might start by just bringing the floor sweeper and it could be a vacuum cleaner. It could be a broom. Um, there's, so there's two ways of, of dealing with behavior when, when the animal is triggered by something. Number one is remove the trigger and make sure the dog never sees it again. That's how I work. So back in the day when I had a Jack Russell Terrier that would attack the vacuum, I hired a cleaning lady and was out of the house anytime she came. You're welcome. That's not a really great solution for just everybody. <laughs> so what the, then in, enter counter conditioning and what might happen is, you know, you're going to do something your dog loves. What does your dog love? Go for a walk, get their dinner, um, play tug. So what you're going to do, you're prior to starting the behavior chain that the dog knows means we're doing one of those things. Like how does your dog know you're going for a car ride? It might start with a chain of you putting on your shoes or a special kind of shoes, or um, it might start with you picking up the car keys and grabbing your wallet. So whatever starts the behavior chain of something the dog loves, first thing you're going to do is pick out, pick up your vacuum or your carpet sweeper, and then you're going to then do what the dog loves. So now we want to minimize the, the trigger for that because it means something amazing is happening somewhere else. Second thing you're going to do is teach a dog hot zone. I think if you Google on my YouTube page, you will find Susan Garrett's hot zone. And you're going to reinforce the dog big, big high value for staying in, in this place when you bring it out. When you, you know, you might like go back and forth without turning it on. Meanwhile, I apologize, Kathy. Your house is going to get dirty. 
because you cannot use this carpet cleaner or brooms, what do you call it? I don't think you're a floor sweeper when the dog's around. If you're going to use it, you put the dog somewhere else, ideally where he can't hear you hear it or do, use it because it's going to create so much frustration in a dog. We want to mitigate frustration for our dogs. We don't want to increase anxiety. So um, put them somewhere else. Do some quick cleaning. You know what? You could take the Susan Garrett tack. Just hire somebody to come in and clean your house when you take the dog to the park for a couple of weeks. Just tell your, your spouse, your partner, just a couple of weeks while we're doing this. It could go on for months. Just saying. Strategy to start. And then it's like I got a lot of other things done. Anyway, and then you work at this counter conditioning. All right? There, there is a podcast on uh, counter conditioning, desensitization, and generalization. You will love it. All right. Um, hello from Ontario. Woo, woo. Let me see. where Have we got any updated... Oh, thank you, Lisa. Donated on behalf of the dogs. That's awesome. All right. Donated $50 from South Africa. Come on, that's a mind blow. Thank you, thank you, thank you. That is awesome. I so, I so appreciate you, um, Petro. Really appreciate that. That's amazing. I, what is this? We're almost at $4,000 and it was just at $2,000 when we started. Woo, woo, dogs at community. You guys are amazing. So good. All right. Uh, trying the three minute potty training, 13 year old beagle and newly acquired three year old Rottweiler mix, not having much luck. At the vets today, nothing found, but both are refusing to go. They are crated. Oh, I don't, I don't know the rest of that. I'm not sure about three minute potty training. Um, it, but potty training in general means you grow excitement for the place you want them to go, and you um, heavily reinforce them for where you want them to go, and then you make sure that if, if I had a, a problem with my dogs urinating or defecating the house, I would take them outside and I would give them a set number, of like 35 seconds, 45 seconds. My dogs go, they go outside and then, and they, they potty on cue. If you see that they're about to potty, use a word, right? Get busy, potty, make it rain. I don't care. Whatever it is you want to use as a cue. You have to wait till they're starting so that you know eventually that's going to be, become the cue. If they don't, you get them back inside. An hour later, you do it again, but you have to supervise them when they're inside. Super important. Um, okay. All right, Caitlin, every dollar counts. And you just gave us 11. Woo! Caitlin, you got to let us know where you're from, though. Appreciate you. Um, all right. Here's a question from Heart to Heart Canine. In your wonderful classes, I know your dogs all playfully hug your leg when you tug. I'm dying to build that into my dog. Would it be easy to explain here? Okay, let me just say that I never want another dog to ever do that again. Um, here's why, here's why I, I don't like it. Well, there's a couple of reasons. Um, and here's why I allowed it. My, one of, I mean, you know, you're not supposed to have favorites. But um, I've, I've had a lot of favorite dogs in my lifetime. But one very, very special dog to me was my little Jack Russell Terrier Twister, who I lost to heart disease. She almost died at nine weeks from Parvo. The Parvo damaged her heart. And I think she was 15 when I lost her. And um, she, I taught her to, to grab my leg as a way, as a Jack Russell Terrier with crazy, crazy keen drive, and she was so fast and flyable in, in her day, right? Times wouldn't be holding up um, now, but, they, but she was, I think, a 4'2 dog as a height dog. And, but she had this crazy prey drive. And so I taught her to grab my leg as a way of, you grab my leg, then we tug. And that puts the focus on my leg so that she doesn't see the other dog's doing flyable. She doesn't know. They turn into white noise. All right? So then... 
she's the only dog that I ever taught to do that. And then uh, after Twister, then I had Buzz, then I had Decaf, then I had Encore, then I had Feature, then I had Swagger. When Swagger was tugging me as a wee puppy, 10 or 11 weeks old, he grabbed my leg. And I said, oh my gosh, this is Twister reincarnated. Hmm, they both have heart problems. Swagger was diagnosed with a heart problem at six. Hmm. Anyway, it reminded me so much of my sweet girl feature that I encouraged it. I didn't stop it. So Twister I taught, Swagger did it on his own. M Minty came on after and I, I, she, you know, just started playing around and I would be like, yeah, you can do that. Anyway, here's why I don't like it. Number one, it puts the dog's weight forward. And when my dog's tugging, I want them to pull back. I want dogs naturally want to carry their weight over their shoulders. I really want them to drive back into their back end because that's the engine that's got all the power. We don't want them pulling. Shoulders are more vulnerable. We really want them weight shifting. Does tugging and weight shifting have anything to do with each other? I have so many videos I can show you of dogs who forward tugged, didn't pull back when they tugged, and they all jumped like kangaroos. They did not have that power from the rear and drive. So that's number one. Number two, it is a B-I-T-C-H when you're wearing shorts. I got to tell you, the marks you get on your body when the nails are just freshly cut or you're wearing shorts. So I hope I have successfully talked you out of ever wanting to do that. Oh, Jose donated a hundred dollars and shared the link on behalf of her puppy Shelby and Guinness. Jose Dubois, thank you so much. You're amazing. What is this? We're already at four thousand. Uh, what? And so I said, Doctor Tobias has he started as his own own, own honey. I want to not count his honey. I want us to grow his campaign. So we have to get to $6,000 total, and then we donate $5,000 to keep this thing moving. And you guys keep sharing, and we are going to keep growing this. And I'm not saying we're going to get there right now. What? Dr. Codger will donate a telehealth consultation. Oh, my gosh, you guys. Oh, my gosh. Is somebody donates that amount. All right. So doc, let me just share Dr. Codger. She is an expert expert of nutrition. She's a veterinarian um, from, oh, what's that little place in New York? What's the capital of New York state? Don't tell me. Syracuse. No, I don't know. Anyway, she's from the States, from New York. When, uh, and she's been a student of mine for a very long time. But I started using her as a consultant, you, doing just this, teleconsultant, when Feature got cancer because she was such a specialist of the keto diet for dogs. She, she put me in touch with who I needed to get in touch with. So this is amazing for anybody to get an opportunity to get a teleconsult with, with Dr. Codger. All you have to do, anybody who wants to donate three, $345, um, then you're getting that teleconsult. Plus, you're donating. It's like a win and a win. So get on that, somebody. Albany. Hey, well, you didn't have to, you know. And I knew it wasn't Syracuse. <laughs> oh, my goodness gracious. Okay. Um, <laughs> don't you love it how reinforcement works? Claudia. I've trained Finnegan and using treats to go into reinforcement when cars drive by on our walks. He used to lunge at them. Oh my gosh, Claudia, well done you. Well done. He now looks for cars in order to get treats. How do I wean him off? So what we're going to do is we're going to build more value for coming into reinforcement zone by this. You're going to go someplace where you know there'll be a lot of cars. And he comes into reinforcement zone and you're going to praise him, give him a good, a nice pat. Wait till the second car comes by, then feed for the second car. Then another car goes by, maybe two more. Then you might feed twice in a row. We're gradually going to increase uh, the number of cars that go by before it gets reinforcement. Now, if you're on a street where there's not, there are not, there are not many cars, you're just going to intertwine. Um, intertwine? We're not braiding, Susan. 
that's weird. You're just going to, you're just going to use food as reinforcement, pats and praise, break him out of reinforcement zone and tug on the leash. You're going to use all different things until he recognizes he's a good boy. Sometimes he's praising him. Eventually, you, you, know, you know, just you've noticed that he stayed in reinforcement zone and 10 cars have gone by and now you're going to go, wow, that was amazing. Thank you. Okay. Um, all right. So Bobby, how am I going to, uh, I'm going to start homeschool the dog. Great. With uh, my dog soon, but how do I walk my dog reactive German shepherd safely without a correction choke collar? Please. I rescue dogs. I want to use your method to help rescue dogs. Okay, Bobby, you're amazing. Love that you have a macaw in your, in your profile picture. That's amazing. So um, what we're going to do is we are going to, we're, we're going to walk the dog on a harness or a head halter. Now, which one of those? I don't want to put a head halter on that dog until you can condition it so that they don't care. Yeah, this is fine. I'll, I'm fine with that. Number, number two is you're going to, do you have a route that you can take where the likelihood of you seeing another dog is very, very low? And number three, do you have a park that you can go to that you know that there are places you can go? For example, Bissy, when she was very reactive to dogs, I would go to this park at the waterfront or there was a bench I could get my back to. I could see the dogs down below. She was a long way away and I'd bring her dog bed and she would just, you know, just chill. Occasionally she would go, uh, I just, I would just feed. Okay. You know, for just, and then eventually I could just read my book and give her a cookie every once in a while. So walk where, where there's low traffic area or walk at off times. So get up at oh dark o'clock, four o'clock in the morning, take your dog for a nice walk then. Right. And, as you go through the program, depending on how much your, react, your dog is sensitive to other dogs, you may find just by learning the games that are in homeschool the dog that you get more focus on you and that the, the stimulation of other dogs becomes white noise. Now, I'm not minimizing that there are some dogs that are, are, are really, um, they're, they're having a, lot, a tough life because of their response to dogs. Those dogs, the number one thing I do is I get them to cha change nutrition. And you join, pick up Dr. Codger's offer to match and um, get, get both the session with Dr. Codger and the donation. Uh, somebody donated already to get that teleconference with Dr. Codger. Woo, woo. Thank you to whoever that was. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you to Dr. Codger, Codger for making such an amazing uh, donation. And um, okay. Polly, you're amazing. $180. That's so good. Thank you so much. What? Susan Delaney. You guys, I'm going to cry. You're blowing my mind here. This is so good. So good. Um, oh, Bobby, six rescue dogs. And Bob Cajun, that's, that's, that's awesome. Wow. I am absolutely blown away. Blown away. Um, so if please, everybody, make sure that you're sharing this on your social media page so that at any point, you know, we make we I'm feeling pretty confident we're going to get to 5000 that we're donating very soon. And then maybe as this uh, live gets shared once we're off the air, we might get this to 10,000. All right. So let's, let's just keep going here. Uh, I'm going to scroll through and see questions. Any more questions? Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Swagger, we're not done yet. We're like, you're getting a little carried away. <laughs> um, okay. So, so for my dog that is potty trained to go outside, is it possible to train it to use the pee pads indoors also? Um, it sure is, Mary. But um, and if you have a small dog, that might be, uh, it, it does create confusion. So, I mean, there are a lot of dogs that do both. A lot of them. Not a problem. However, am I drunk or did, 
or did it suddenly get really blurry? <laughs> What's happening? Oh my gosh. Um, I don't drink, so I think it's the camera. I might just change cameras here. Hold on. Let me see. Luckily, doing a live, you always have a backup camera or three on hand. So I've got some backups here. Oh my gosh, that is not staying where it should stay. So, oh, well look, the blurriness is gone. Yay. And so the, the downside of potty training a dog to use pee pads as well as go outside is if there's ever anything like a jacket, a towel, newspaper, anything on the floor, there's a higher probability that it's going to get peed on. So can you do it? Yeah, you can. Absolutely. But it, um, I, I mean, if, if there's, I mean, you might live like in a penthouse apartment and it's a long way down and maybe your dog also doesn't like um, going to the bathroom in snow, but, and you know, you live where there's snow. So I, I get it that there's a lot of reasons why you might want to do that. I personally would avoid it, but you don't, don't let anyone say it can't be done. Absolutely can be done. Um, you could get like, as long as you don't do agility, I think this is a bad thing if you do agility. You could get those um, potty containers, like they're like a kitty litter box that have turf in them. Allison Nadeau, thank you. Thank you for your generous donation of $100. That's amazing, amazing, amazing. Uh, okay, so I'm scrolling up to see more questions for me. Uh, <laughs> Syracuse is the dog training capital of New York. Well, see, maybe that's how I knew it. Um, Twister was awesome. She was a special girly, that's for sure. Okay. Lisa says, when I come home from being out, my dogs run to the treat cupboard. They used to do this quietly, but recently they have started barking as they run to the treat club. <laughs> Not sure how to get quiet back. Um, so I'm trying to think of a reinforcement. See, when you can predict that a reinforcement is happening, like at five o'clock, um, my neighbor comes home and as soon as he does, he starts scattering money all over his lawn, making it rain. Then I'm going to start looking out the window at, at five to five. And if I've pocketed some cash from this game every single day, I'm going to start looking earlier and I'm going to start doing the happy dance. It's almost time. Now, feeding food, you get a dopamine hit at the same time. So it's even worse. So I would suggest you not feed them the moment you get home. You not do your game at the treat cupboard. That you walk home, you walk in, you maybe take them out. Maybe take them out to go potty and then check the mail. And when they have forgotten about it, give them a behavior to you. Everyone hop it up in your dog beds and then you can give them a cookie then if you feel a need to. Cookies for nothing are not something that I'm massively fond of, but, um, okay. So I'm going to let's, let's, Nanette's got a story. Long time ago, I had a dog training client who put pee pads all over the floor in her house. It attached house with many rooms at the same and the same client wondered why the dog was going everywhere in the house, even after the pee pads were removed. <laughs> Oh, yes. What gets reinforced absolutely will continue to happen. Okay. Let's see. What are we at now, team? Where, what, to, oh, we're at 4,235. Now, is that the total GoFundMe donation or is that how close we are to our 5,000? Aaron, if you could give me some clarification on that, that would be awesome. Um, okay. There was another, uh, question I saw on car desensitization, easy for you to say. 
I, I did talk about that earlier. So you can, um, you can go back and scroll through that. And maybe some of your um, questions I, I've missed. So go ahead and re-answer them. Put them back in the, in the comment section. Caitlin Bloomberg, I want to start agility with my 11 month old Brittany puppy Tango. She's very exuberant around other dogs. This class requires her to work off leash around other dogs. Any advice on how to work up for this? We are in read callers. Okay, Caitlin. Number one, um, it's highly unlikely that the, what they're going to do in, a, in an agility class for your 11 month old um, for Tango. I mean, there are some really, really good agility classes out there, but there's some really, really not so good ones. So here's my advice. Keep working on recallers, then join Handling 360. And you can do all kinds of skills. Your dog will be amazing. And after you get through the first two levels of H360, you can then go to that class. And here's the thing, Caitlin, you and Tango will be the stars of that class. I have no doubt about it. I have seen it happen so many times with our students who do recallers, join H360, go to a local agility class. They all go, wow, that dog's got mad skills. I promise you. I promise you. Okay, so, uh, so 1,800 to go. Thank you for that, Bobby. 1,800 to go. And I might have to jump off here because, um, because Chelsea is about to leave and I've got to take care of things downstairs. Uh, will you do a podcast for me about what gets reinforced will continue to grow? All my owners can use it. Okay, Dr. Codger, uh, since you are matching so many of these donations, then we will do a podcast on what gets reinforced will continue to grow. And I, I just missed. Uh, so $1,800, $1 for every age your dog is old or $1 for every month your dog is in, old. And um, if you've got more than one dog, add them together. If you have ever got any value from our YouTube page, our, our Instagram page, our um, Facebook page, we never ask you to pay for that value. And all I ask of you now is you share with me, join me on this project that we help do something amazing for dogs who are in a, in a horrible way. Dogs and cats that are in a horrible way. So go if you can then absolutely we're at 4,297. Go to that link, dogsat.com forward slash go fund me. All right. Yes, definitely. The podcast on reinforcement will be awesome. Awesome. Um, okay. Marie Butler. Hi, Marie. My dog, Bunny Hop's going up the stairs, uh, especially the first uh, on the first and second stair. What am I missing? Um, so you've absolutely made sure that there's no pain. Number one, always pain. Always start with a veterinarian. What is going on with this camera? Um, number two, then I would do ladder work and Cavaletti work to get that split. And then you could do Cavaletti's on a hill or on an angle. You are driving me cray cray. My brother used to say to me when I would say, you're driving me crazy. He would say, it's not really a drive. It's more like a short putt. <laughs> okay. Little joke for you all watching. Okay. Um, thank you. Thank you for, for your kind words. That's really awesome. Thank you. All right. Um, I'm just going to scroll up one more time and see... Dina from Kitchener. We're practically neighbors. This camera is going nuts. Wait, what did I, last time, look at, last time I just did this. And it kind of fixed it, didn't it? Not really. All right. I'm going to, I'm just, I'm going to keep going here. Good Carol, Carol Brown. 
Uh, the fundraiser is to help dogs who've been displaced by the f wildfires in Canada. And Dr. Tobias in BC started a GoFundMe page. Doc, uh, dogs.com forward slash GoFundMe will get you to Dr. Tobias's page. And then you can um, donate there. And for every, we, I'm recommending that people donate a dollar for every year their dog is old. Or if you have more than one dog, let's add it up. And if you can do a multiplier of 10, that's good. See, it kind of went back. But guess what? It's like you got to behave yourself or. And here's what I'm going to do. I'm changing out this camera. And it's not going to be as nice one. But boom. Changing up for camera for a good old reliable one. Okay. Good old Logitech that I might have to do something about getting it to sit better up here. Oh my God, you guys are so patient. And now it looks like I've been drinking again because we're all crooked. Um, okay, you guys have been so patient on here. So patient. Um, okay, Pam says, my four month old border collie loves to play. <laughs> Jeez. Now you got to see how messy my desk is too. My four month old border collie loves to play with my boxer, but he grabs her face. All right, presto. He grabs her face. I did a podcast on this subject, Pam, and somebody from my team is going to get you that podcast link and put it in the YouTube because there's videos, there's games, there's exact steps for you to take to stop that behavior. All right, so uh, it's not fair. You, we, we, we shouldn't make, oh, we got two puppies. Oh, I didn't. I thought it was seven years. See, my camera was falling. Okay, Pam, first of all, little cray cray getting a four month and a seven month. I'm not judging. I've done something similar. Um, yeah, you are, you've got to separate these puppies and train them separately because I mean, you can follow everything that I said in that podcast, absolutely do it the same, where we're going to, we're going to create what's called a, um, a positive interrupter, a word that you're, the problem is you've got two young puppies. You're going to need two different words because they're both going to come running and the anarchy will, will continue. So watch that podcast, but Pam, if you are in, if you're not in recallers, I strongly recommend that you you um, contact our team, all right? And anybody that's listening to this, if I've inspired you to join one of our programs, then contact the team. We don't have any of our programs open right now. Well, they are open, but they're open. They're a lot more money um, than what I'm going to let you join now. If you're watching this and I've inspired you to get into Homeschool the Dog or Recallers, contact wag at dogsthat.com and just with the subject line, fire, all right? Fire. And um, we'll let you join one of our programs at the lowest investment that you can get it for. Okay. And I think that when you have two puppies like that, you absolutely need it. Okay. Some great questions that have come in here. And we are now at 4365. I, I can't believe how great this has gone. Just, I honestly didn't expect that we were going to get to 5,000 tonight, but wow, looks like we might. Um, okay, I'll do one more question. And I know I'm just looking. Any questions about my new puppy? Because I do love talking about him. He's not here yet. Want to see a picture? I can show it on my phone. Um... Okay, there was another question about how do I get my oldest dog to keep stop taking toys away from my middle one? Robin, I would I would think using the positive interrupter and then reinforcing him. Like we have that problem with Tater and Belief. They like to steal each other toys. It's just not appropriate because they're both got terrier in them and it could end badly. And I don't want they they they, they get along great. I want them only to get along great. So I'm not going to allow them to go up and steal toys from each other. It's just not not going to be cool. So I would go back to that podcast. It's going to be, um, oh my gosh, what will be the first thing I'll do with my puppy? He is, let me just tell you, he, he will be when he gets here, he'll be here on a Wednesday and that Friday 
he will uh, be turning 11 weeks old. So that's the oldest I've ever got a puppy other than a rescue dog. And so <laughs> it'll be very interesting to see um, what that what difference that will make. He'll be a far, far more confident puppy. His name is Prophet. And <clears throat> he is currently in Germany with his breeders. And they're on vacation, camping in southern Germany. And then uh, two very dear friends of mine are going to meet up with them next Wednesday. And they're going to take him to their home for 12 days. And then another good friend of mine, my fitness coach, Functional Patterns, woo, woo, uh, FP Brantford, little plug for FP Brantford, she's going to fly over and pick him up from my two very good friends. Okay. Um, so it is the, think the prophet. So you'll know which prophet it is. P-R-O-P-H-E-T, prophet. And he is a border collie. And he didn't, I didn't choose him. He chose me, Marie. It was, um, that's what, how he got his name. It was divine intervention. I had zero intention. I've got my hands full with all of you guys, helping all of you guys, getting out two podcasts every week, writing a book, helping my online students. I'm rewriting two of my online programs. I don't have time for a puppy. And this is only three. She just turned three. But he would not be denied. And, um, it was just like one of those things where everything had to come together at exactly the same moment in the universe. And then all of a sudden I have a puppy and I can't tell you, I, I, I have not been this excited about getting a puppy for a very, very long time because all of my other puppies that I've got for the last three, um, I bred them myself. So I was excited about the pregnancy, but by anybody out there who has ever whelped, a litter of puppies, then you know by the time they go and my puppies are 10 weeks old when they leave, you're a little bit more exhausted than you are um, excited to have your new puppy. So I this is definitely the most exciting that I've been. Holy crap. Look at how close we are. And um, how many out you put, it, put in the comment if you've ever read Shaping Success. So that is a book that um, I wrote about my red border collie buzz. And I, um, I'm just gonna see if there's a, there is a picture that I can share with you of profit. Here we go. So I wrote that about my uh, red BC buzz. And I always said after um, having buzz that I'd like a do over. Buzzy was my first dog that I said I'm training without physical corrections and verbal punishment right from the start. I'm going to clicker train him. I'm going to use phys, uh, reward markers. I'm going to do all these amazing things. And, and I think Buzzy, I owe Buzzy such a, a big debt of gratitude because um, he taught me so much about all the things I was doing wrong which allowed me to help all of you guys to do things better. And, and I always said, man, I, 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 it would be kind of cool. I got to get myself another red dog. Not that there are gonna, any, ever going to be one like Buzzy ever again. Um, so I think that potentially um, Prophet could be, well, I, I think he's more of a feature reincarnated. His structure reminds me a lot of feature, but then a Buzzy reincarnated. Okay. So, Oh, look at my boy right there. How sweet is he? That is a uh, prophet. All right. Um, wow. Okay. Thank you. I'm talking. Jen Clark, Carol Birch, Ruthie. Ruthie Hunt. Ruthie's a longtime friend of mine. And all of you anonymous angels out there. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Now I got to go back here and remove the picture of profit. I thought I did. There we go. Um, yeah. And so I've always tried to get another red, red dog and um, a red smooth. So I had after buzzy, I had encore in feature 
And then I wanted to breed to feature to a red smooth dog. And at the last minute they pulled the plug, the owner of the stud wouldn't let me. So then um, Swagger was a red rough coated, but Swag Swagger is pretty beautiful. So I don't mind having him, uh, having, having him be coated. And, you know, I kept wanting to breed to more to a smooth dog and, um, and I, and I just, it never happened. And so, yeah, finally, it would have been more convenient had Prophet gone to a breeder, like say 20 minutes away that I could have just gotten the car and pick him up. But you just, you know, some things are out of, out of your control. Okay. So yes, if you haven't read Shaping Success, there's a lot of the original, re the, the games that are in recallers, a lot of them are origins are in Shaping Success. Um, okay. So yeah, definitely he was, he was a gift and I'm super, so what, back to Dr. Codger's questions. What is the first thing that I will teach him? Um, he has great tug drive. I'm just going to work on building a relationship for the first little while. Well, he's when I'm going to pick him up at the airport and, um, then I will, um, and then when I get him home, It'll, we'll be outside and just getting to know each other. Okay. This is an incriminating question. So can I plead the fifth here? I don't have that many. Seriously, not that many. Um, of my own currently, of my own, I have swagger, momentum, and this. See, that's not many. Profit will be my fourth of my own. Holy smokes. $185 away. That's it. And then I will click the link. Can I do this live on air? How much fun would that be? If I click the link and I donate $5,000, I don't know. Somebody who's going through the process, do you, do you have to, will anybody see credit card information if I do this live? Probably, right? Okay, well, I've got, you got me. There is belief and there is tater salad. <laughs> but those dogs, Kim, uh, they're really like Kim owns them too. So I'm, I'm, uh, when I have to do my total count, I'm, yes, I have six dogs. <laughs> okay. So they, they will. All right. So what I'll do is we'll keep talking. I'll make the donation. And then you guys can go and see that we, in a little over an hour's time, did such an amazing thing. And I want you guys, when you go to bed tonight and you list your gratitude, that you say, whether you were financially in a position that you could, you could contribute to this by you sharing it on the page, on sharing it on your page, you've contributed. And I want you to write that in your gratitude journal. Today, I'm grateful that I was able to help something that was really, really important. All right. So we're close. We're a, a couple hundred dollars away. That's it. So yes, I am super excited about owning profit. His parents are amazing, not just agility dogs, but they are amazing agility dogs. They're, they're, they're just amazing character. Um, he brought in, the breeder brought in all kinds of dogs. The grandmothers visited with all the puppies. His uh, uncle has visited with all the puppies. His mother is, you know, the puppies are 10 weeks old and she's still interacting with them. So I love their temperament. I love how stable they are. And uh, yeah, I'm super excited. Um, did you want to say something? Come on over here then. Momentum. Do you tell everyone thank you so much? for helping us help these dogs. Yeah. Okay, take it off now. I'll finish this. Okay, so um, if you have any more questions about profit, I'm getting my, my GoFundMe ready to go. Uh, if anybody sees, they, they might think that we're doing a, a GoFundMe for say $162. Come on now. We got this. We got this. All right. And anybody that's donating in this from the U S it's practically like 
what, 12 cents? Because it's in Canadian funds. So practically free. Practically. Will profit do agility? Great question, Robin. My plan always, I love the sport of agility. My plan always that my dogs will do agility. And my plan might come to fruition, but it's all about what brings that dog joy. So this E has been slow coming on because agility didn't bring her joy. And so now it sure does. Uh, <laughs> I have more dog beds than I can count, but this is, you know, getting a new puppy. It's practically an invitation to get another dog bed. Isn't it my friends? Yeah. Am I right or am I right? Oh, wait, maybe I can use Google. I can use Google play. Okay. Yeah. If you think we can hit 5,000, all we need is 160, $162, $162. And I will go back and answer. Um, this, you come on over here. Everyone can see you over here. Little, where'd you go? Come here, Dissy. Here you go. Do you want to come up here so they can see you? There we go. Little this, this, yeah. All these amazing people are contributing to help dogs that really need, they, they've lost their people. They may not be finding them for a little while. They might be injured and all these amazing people are helping them. Thank you, little. Okay. Um, she is a hero, that girl of mine. That girl of mine, isn't she? Yeah, your mama, you know your mama loves it. I've ever, all my dogs, I've told them the puppy's coming. I keep telling Thissy, she's the only one that will get to sleep on my bed. She's the only one of the, all the dogs in the house. She's the only one that gets to sleep on my bed. And she will still be the only one that will get to sleep. What? Come on. Come on. What the heck? How does GoFundMe give themselves a tip? Wow. I mean, I'm okay with the tip, but that's a custom tip. Here we go. Okay. All right. Now, you guys can now, we can probably refresh now. And let's see where we're at. So, somebody on the team, I don't know how long it takes uh, the GoFundMe to, to get the real-time money up, but... See where it's at. Oh, it's my, my donation didn't show up yet. I just donated $5,000. It's there. Thank you to Anonymous, to Michelle, to Colleen, to Claire, to Jay Jane, to Carolyn. Thank you. I know there's a lot of you that um, didn't get your name read out. And I know that you donated. So we did it. In one hour and 13 minutes, we raised $10,000 to help dogs who really, really need our help. So this is for you, right at each and every one of you. I'm so blessed to be in a community with like-minded people. And um, I, I think you're all amazing. So go ahead and refresh the uh, GoFundMe a couple more times because um, that – Maybe they had to double check on mine. <laughs> Are you sure you're giving away that much money? Um, oh, there's a lag with the GoFundMe page. Oh, okay. But it's done. So do we hang around until it shows up? Did you guys, how long, when you donated, did you see how long before your name showed up? Yeah, I think you should all be proud. $10,000 we raised in 75 minutes. That shows we are truly a heart-based community. 
a hundred percent. We are a heart-based community that we all are here because we share our love for dogs and cats because this money is not going <laughs> to just be for dogs. Okay. And um, Dr. Debias says, thank you. Um, did it show up now? Can we? Uh... Yeah, really appreciate each and every one of you. What you've done here tonight is, is so good. So I'm going to sign off. My team says that, uh, that it's there. And all of you have got lots of karma tonight. And yeah, it says the 5,000, but the, 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 the total right now that I'm seeing when I refresh that page is $5,025, but it should be 10,000. And you got to hear more about profit. I could talk about profit all day long. I swear I'm so excited about, uh, about this new puppy. Okay, so, um, so I'm gonna sign off and you guys can refresh and see it that it, we, we did 10,000. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And um, check out the podcast happening on Wednesday. A lot of you had questions. I know it's gonna help. We'll see ya. <laughs>